Shalom. Kama halogim la Yahawa ba Hashem Yahawa Shai ba Hashem Racha Kudash. The more honor to the apostles and elders, the great millstone who were well, laboring the word and doctrine. Shalom and in peace. And that being to the elect of the nation of Israel. So I'm going to do a quick lesson. I say quick. I'm driving, so Lord willing, I'm able to get scriptures and you know accurately paraphrase where where possible. But please look them up. You know, if anything was unclear or anything was left unsaid or I said yeah I pulled that and I didn't please remind me in the comment section below that being said the kingdom of heaven right because this you know all these you know, religions promise an idea of they all have even you know non so called Abrahamic religions have an idea of you know heaven or reaching a, a point of perfection or something to that degree but what actually is you know a biblical understanding of heaven of the kingdom of heaven specifically so firstly we need to hit what is the word for heaven so this is Daniel 2 verse 44 it says and in the days of these kings you know and read it in context it's talking about you know the beasts there's four beasts which is representative of four major empires yes there was other empires of the kingdoms but the four major kingdoms that were ruling upon the earth you know and then the last kingdom after the roman empire the roman empire being the fourth beast you know and we don't need to get all into that you can if you want you know in another video you can look that but you know after the time of the fourth beast which is the fourth kingdom so Rome that's at the point that the king the true king the true monarch the true ruler of the earth our king Yahweh Shai is going to set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed okay so it says Daniel 2 and 44 and in the days of these kings shall the power the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall not be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever right so what does it mean it shall not be left to an other people and I said I get that word heaven I'll do that shortly what does that mean other people would signify would connote an idea that there's a singular people a people group that's evident throughout the scriptures you know that, the, that these people will inherit the kingdom of the most high Knowing that it's also known, sorry, knowing that he is also known as the God of Israel. Who are these people? Of course, they are the Israelites standing with the elect. But that's again, that's not the focal point, the focus of this lesson. So let's get this word for heaven. The word is Shamayam, Shamayam, and the word Mayam means water or waters. Okay, so it's uh, you know from from the waters. So it says, heaven, heaven's sky, visible sky, heaven as a board of the Most High. Now people all, the common Christian, and when I say Christian, I mean Gentile, you know, heathen, heathen, non-Israelite Christianity, plantation Christianity, that's the term I'm looking for, right? The, the Christianity we were taught was whipped into us, you know, and we were made to believe when I say we, you know what I mean, the, tri the tribes of Israel, the so-called black, so-called Hispanic, so-called Native American, you know, especially, <laughs> especially the Hispanics. Everyone's got a, a Jesu Christo, their rosary beads, heavy into Catholicism. Anyway, so you have levels to heaven, you do have a heaven, the sky, you know, where the birds are at, where the clouds are, you know, and then above that, you have another heaven. Right, and then above that you have another heaven. So there's levels to heaven in that sense. Let's, let's prove that. So this is the book of 2 Corinthians 12 and 2. It's from Apostle Paul. It says, I knew a man in Hamashiach above 14 years ago whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell the most I knoweth 
such an one caught up unto the third heaven right and that the Greek word there would be Uranos which again it has the, the same you know, double meaning or I always say double meaning but multiple meanings so you can have the Uranos or the Shamayam where the birds are above that you know so called space so on and so forth so there's levels to heaven there's levels to the physical heaven but then you have something known as the kingdom of heaven which is what Yahweh Shai is coming to bring so we we'll start Matthew 3 and 2 it says and saying repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and this is John the Baptist you know coming in the same spirit as Elijah why because he was Elijah right if you if you have the same spirit the, the literal same spirit you know it's he was the same spirit that's why Yahweh Shai said you know Elias Elijah must come back and fulfill all things or restore all things yeah restore all things forgive me and then he said but you know Elias Elijah is come already right if you receive it this is Elijah which was for to come you know multiple times in the scripture it said they literally said John the Baptist was Elijah you know and that was one preaching to, to be a forerunner to Yahweh Shai Hamashiach right, that's where you can read um, Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3 you can read about the mission that John the Baptist was sent on you know Elijah or John the Baptist said verse 2 repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand right so Yahweh Shai was coming to bring and usher in that, that period of the, the kingdom but first he, the gospel need to be preached the gospel means good news what is the good news what is the gospel is that the kingdom you know that we're not under this damn devil forever it's that we have autonomy we have liberty we have rulership you know coming coming to an earth near you very soon coming soon to an earth near you All right there it says verse 3 Matthew 3 3 for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And who was that? That was Elijah. Okay. So let's get back to this. I'm just going to hit a few scriptures that say Kingdom Heaven. Alright, this is, these are, I think they call them the, the B. The B attitudes or the beatitudes, I'm not sure exactly how you say that, but in Matthew the fifth chapter. So Matthew 5 and 3, it said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alright. Then verse 10, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And it reminds me of a song by Louis Armstrong. Called heaven, I think it's just called heaven. In fact, let's pull it. Heaven, everybody talking about heaven, ain't going there. Heaven, heaven, gonna sing all over God's heaven. All right, that was a little, a little excerpt there. And that's a beautiful album. No, it's a good album, that Louis and the Good Book. So that's called um, his version is called Shout All Over God's Heaven. And then I can't find any lyrics online for that. But here, this is a song by a cappella, and it seems that they're the same or very similar lyrics. Everybody talking about heaven, they ain't going there. You know, it says that a lot. It says, well, I read about the streets of gold and I read about the throne. Not everyone calling Lord, Lord is going to see that heavenly home. And where's that from? That's coming straight out of the scripture. You know, and that would be referring to what the kingdom of heaven. You know, everybody will not receive the kingdom of heaven. What does it mean to receive the kingdom of heaven? To receive rulership. You know, so there's going to be many people within the kingdom. That mean they, you know, they dwell, they are citizens or um, uh, tributary subjects unto the kingdom, unto the people of the kingdom. As we read at the start, you know, it shall be not be left to another people. There it is. Matthew 7 and 21 says, 
Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in to the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Okay, so not just because you're giving lip service, you know, as it says. Let's see if I can find that. It says there is Matthew 15 and 8. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoureth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. There is, okay. Isaiah 29 and 13. Wherefore the Lord saith, For as much as this people draweth near me with their mouth and with their lips do honour me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Alright, and again. You know, certain people will keep the law, you know, not 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 sin because you know they don't want to get brought up by by men, by men, man. But in the comfort, perceived comfort, and perceived security of their own home, they'll happily go and sin. Oh man, no one's watching me. Man, the Lord's watching you. Whose eyes are ten thousand times brighter than the sun. Okay, so was just a little side note, you know, so everybody's talking about it, everyone in the church is talking about it, you know, but a lot of them, man, didn't, Jesus, didn't I, was, wasn't I, you know, even Israelites, uh, Yahweh Shai, didn't I do this, didn't I do that, yeah, but you were faithless, you know, and, and ultimately what, you weren't of the elect, that's what I always comes back to, so yeah, we can, that, that's what should keep us humble. You know, we can do every single thing. We can do it perfectly. We can do 17, <laughs> 70 million videos a day. Go out to camp every hour. You know, keep the law. Not eat a single unclean thing in our life. But if you're not of the elect, man, you don't mean anything. You know, so it all comes back to faith. It all comes back to faith. You know, that you believe that you could be one of them. Them that were chosen aforetime, or before the foundation of the world, is it true? But that being said, you know, you have to do your videos, you have to go to camp, you have to keep the law to the best of your ability. You know, it's not a license to sin, don't let it be a stumbling block. But, you know, if you were set up, say, oh man, well, you know, Brother Mashal said I could do 17 videos a day and it's fine. You know, and I might not make it, so I'm not going to do any. All right, cool. Let that be a stumbling block unto you. You know, the Lord's ultimately set that stumbling block up from the foundation of the world. Okay, so with that on that topic, this is Matthew, what, Matthew five and nineteen. In fact, let's start eighteen. It says, "Verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle, and jot is where you get the term. Um, sorry, where you get the term." Jot is from the Greek term iota, which is like an I. There it is. Yoda, Yoda. So what would that be in Hebrew? That would be a ya. You know, a, a, a ya, which is the smallest letter in Hebrew. So when you write in the Lord's name and you're writing all, you know, all caps, for lack of a better term, all capitals, really that, that first character, the ya, should always be smaller than the rest. You know, so if you're making garments, if you're making you know, whatever you're making with the name on, you have to make sure you get that right. So it says the Hebrew letter, and they've got the modern Hebrew. You know, the modern Hebrew is still the smallest of them all. But there is Yoto. So really that would be what a Ya. But that's where you get the term um, in school, when we were learning languages, you know, French or Spanish. We'd be learning, you know, you'd write something up in your neat book. But then any working out or you know guessing activities, exercises we did, we'd write in our jota. Alright, so where does the term jota come from? It comes from this term yota. Iota. Just a little, little side side thing there. Yeah, 
Let's see what few more scriptures we've got. Sip man, it's part of the Lord's Prayer. How can I forget that? You know, we literally say, Matthew 6 and 10, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Okay? So we, we pr when we're praying, we're praying for what? The kingdom. The rulership. That's what it means. Right? And it's not the kingdom of King Charles. I read that one. This is Matthew 13 and 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof, goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth a field. Let's keep going. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking, seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. You know, so we have to put away... That's what the parables are representing here. Putting away, you know, selling all that we have and giving to the poor and following Yahweh Shai. You know, in that example there. Or, you know, putting away. Basically, we have to be ready to give our all, give everything we own in, in order to receive this. I think I'll close out on this though. This is Matthew 19 and 17. It says, Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Yahweh said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, which, what is that? What's a regeneration? It says, When the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Right, so there's going to be government within the kingdom of heaven. In fact, I know I said that's the last one. I've thought of another one. So Matthew 19, 28. And Yahweh shall say unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit upon the throne of his glory, sorry, in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone that have forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. All right, so that's heavy. All right, bear with me because it just flew out my head now. Right, it's flew back in my head. Wali Yahweh Shem Yahushai. Right. As Yehuda would say. Alright. Right, so this is Matthew 11 and 11. It says, Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Now listen, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. So what does that mean? How is the how is the kingdom of heaven suffered violence if the king you know the kingdom is a rulership while well, Rome's ruling? So how is the kingdom of heaven suffered violence? Because we are the Israelites are the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, that's why it said it shall not be left to another people. Let's prove it. Where, what nation are the Pharisees? They're Israelites. Okay. Luke 17, 20 and 21. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of the Messiah should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of the Messiah cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of the Messiah is within you. Right? So we're all, you know, theoretically eligible for it. Yeah, but we need to activate that kingdom energy. You know, that kingdom spirit, the Holy Spirit within us. And so that's what we're all striving for. And when we get changed, you know, there's no doubt. There's no impedance from this flesh. And we're up. All right, the kingdom of heaven. Giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Racha Kudash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well.
Labour in the word and doctrine. Shalom, meaning peace. May that be unto the elect. Shalom.